What's going on everybody? Welcome to the very first Tech Tip Tuesday. Uh, if you're like me and you've been TIG welding a little bit, or for, you know, probably even a week, uh, you've ran into this problem uh, while dressing a little bit. Shout out to everybody who gave Defiant Metal a follow on Instagram. Really appreciate that, account's growing slowly. I got these two pieces of metal here. This would be kind of like, a, these are two by two square tubing. It'd be kind of like if you were building like a table or some kind of a rack. Uh, and you're gonna TIG weld it. One of the problems with TIG welding is if you cut something and it's not quite straight or it's not quite long enough, uh, and you end up with a gap, it's a little bit harder to weld it up than if it was if you were just MIG welding it. So today, we're gonna go over how I would fill a gap similar to this. Now, as you can see, both of these pieces are pretty rusty. They've been sitting around in my garage for a little while. Uh, it was long, one long piece. I cut it up for this video. So the first thing I'm going to do is clean them up. I just got one red 3M scotch Bright disc right here, and I'm just going to clean all this rust off all these. I always like to wipe down everything I'm gonna weld with a little lacquer thinner or acetone or something. Something just to make sure it's clean. Especially where you're gonna be welding. I mean, see, so there's something on it. Even if it looks clean. I'll even do my filler rod. All right, now that all of our metal's clean, I'm going to clamp these down to the table with the gap, kind of the gap that we're shooting for. Uh, most of the time when I weld something up like this and I'm dealing with a gap, it's because this piece was cut crooked. You know, like the saw kind of went down a little crooked or something, so you'll end up with something like, more something like this, where you have contact on one side and a gap on the other side, but everything is actually square with each other. But for this, we're just gonna, well, let's check it. So right there, this was cut with a ziz wheel, and with these two pieces square, there actually is a gap over here. Let's back it off even more. See that? It's almost touching over here now, and a pretty good sized gap over here. We'll clamp it right there. The method I'm gonna use for all of this works for everything. It doesn't really matter what you're welding together. I just happen to have some of this. So I hope you can see there's about a 3 16 gap over here and up here, and it closes down to maybe a fat 16th on this other side. Now, I'm just gonna get some tacks around these corners so that way we can unclamp it and move it around how we want. This is just mild steel, square tubing, so I have some ER70 filler wire here. Pretty standard stuff. I'm gonna start on, I don't know if you can hear me. I'm gonna start on this side because this is a good solid coming into the side of the material where this is an end. This side is more easily probably gonna burn out versus this. So I'm gonna start building up a little bit of material here, then jump over to here and build up some material and then jump back over to here and try and bridge this gap with a good tack weld.
Okay, so I just had something interesting happen. Um, I don't know if you could see on that first weld, it was like a lot of popping and a little bit of sparking, almost like it didn't even have any gas in it. So if you can see the one on the right, how bad it looks, and the one on the left looks like it should. Well, that was because of a collet in here. So I bought these Rad Radnor collets right here. Um, I didn't really think much of it. I got them from air gas because I didn't have any uh, 332nd collets and I had the tungsten and the filler wire and the gas lenses and everything. So I just picked up some collets and threw them in the torch. Uh, and I should have known better because we've ran into this problem at RCR before where we had uh, different brands of torch pieces. I kind of haven't really heard much about this. Maybe it's common knowledge for all I know that you can't mix match brands, but it didn't work. You can see the difference. I switched to a, uh, a 16th tungsten because it's the only one that I have all the parts for. So I have the Weldcraft collet gas lens in the uh, Weldcraft head. So that seemed to have fixed it. It's unfortunate. Now I got a bag of collets that I can't use, but I'll have to order some Weldcraft ones in the correct size. So we'll keep going with the smaller 16th inch tungsten. I got to get this crappy tack cleaned up and redone and then we'll go ahead and finish up the other four. All right, now we're just gonna go across the top of this. And I don't know what this method is called or if this is the correct way to do it. I call it putting little teeth across the gap. What I'm pretty much gonna do is put little tack welds that just bridge the gap, kind of evenly spaced all the way down here. Now, like I said, this is just the way I fill in gaps. I don't know if this is the correct way. It's just the way that works for me. Let me see if I can see what that looks like. I'm gonna flip this over and try and get a better shot at it with the camera so you can actually see what I'm doing. Now we have each side welded up and all we have left to do is these 90 degree corners. Some of these have actually cracked down the center but that doesn't matter. We're just really looking for the material there. You can see this side is a little bit bigger than this side. Not sure if you can see it. I'm sure it's the camera's probably trying to focus on my face but uh, yeah let's get these tacked up.
All right, now that we have the whole thing tacked up, uh, the only thing left would be to clean up all of this color and get it back to like a clean slate, kind of like right where we were starting without all this oxidation on it. For that, I'm gonna start with this wire wheel because it is still kind of warm and uh, it won't bother won't bother this wheel like it would that scotch bright. It'd probably burn up the scotch bright. See this like that. So, after getting it all tacked up, uh, see the gap doesn't look so bad anymore. This might be a scenario where you would actually do a weave weld and go back and forth and maybe wouldn't even have needed these little teeth. Uh, I have no idea. I have never tried that technique, so if I, ever, if I ever do mess with that and that is better, well, let me know if you do that, how you would bridge a gap, and, uh, and I'll try it sometime. But for now, we're gonna, we're gonna go with this. We tacked it all together all the way around and then now we're just gonna weld it up. So before we start, I did grab a new piece of filler rod. This one's getting a little short, and I grabbed a new one. I hope you can see that it's still the same gold brassy color as this one on the end. Uh, but I took some Scotch-Brite and cleaned all the way down this because it's been sitting in my cart over there and it was rusty. So I just took some red hand Scotch-Brite and cleaned it all off and got all the rust off of it and then cleaned the whole thing with some lacquer thinner. Let me. This is what actually came off of all that. So that's why I'm saying it's important to always wipe down even your filler rod. Because if you don't get this off of there, it's going into your weld. I'm gonna start with this little short one anyway. I'm gonna need some more heat for this. For all those tack welds, I had this set to about 85 amps. Uh, I bumped it up to Alright, let's put on your welding hood. I'm still getting used to welding around a camera. It's a lot harder than I thought it would be. You'd think you'd be able to just set the camera kind of somewhere out of the way and shoot the weld, but you really can't see anything then. So I find myself straddling the camera. Anyway, not too bad. Just got two more sides to weld up and then we're done.
Well, there you have it, guys. Uh, you can barely even tell, or really can't tell, that there was ever even a gap there. So if you ever find yourself coming across and you're running up to a spot and there's just too big of a gap and you don't know what to do, that's the technique I use. I build little bridges spaced out all the way across, clean it back up, and then weld it up. I've used it a bunch, especially if something gets messed up or something doesn't quite fit right. It happens a lot when you're welding like a maybe a machine piece to a fabricated piece, you know, and the, those tolerances, there's a little wiggle room there and you got to fit it up or something, or maybe there's a big gap. Anyway, this is just one technique. It's just the one I use, the one I've used a bunch in the past. I'm definitely going to be exploring more ways to weld up a gap, uh, TIG welding, that is and maybe even MIG welding in the future, if we ever get a MIG welder in the shop. But anyway, I hope you'll subscribe if you're not already, and I'll see you all in the next one.